So we have to talk about the S&P 500 index ETF, ticker symbol SPY, as it's been going both up and down, skewing the perception for many market participants. So in this video, I wanna go ahead and talk about what are some things that we could see for the overall market and break down some macroeconomic climates that are definitely impacting the way the markets are moving. So we've recently had some major data come out, for example, the CPI report that came out February 14th, and a lot of individuals were lost because we had inflation actually come in hotter, right? Which is bad. However, we didn't see the overall market just trend straight downward. See, there's a lot of extrapolation that occurs in the overall market where many individuals believe, well, you know, the trend has to go directly in one direction. And that's not really true. See, the market is much more dynamic than we actually tend to give it credit for. Which is why in my private group, I mentioned that February 14th, there was going to be some volatility and there is no point in chasing. Now, if we take a look into the closing for February 13th and compare it to the closing on February 14th, we're gonna see that although there was a lot of volatility, the market is still moving sideways. And then today, February, 15th, we had even more data with the retail sales suggesting that individuals and consumers are actually still spending. Right now, a lot of people are conflicted with this data because on one hand you have, well, okay, savings are down, but on the other hand, we have a robust job market. So individuals, consumers are still spending, which you know obviously helps the GDP and continues the growth in the economy because they still have a job that is paying them their paycheck where they don't have to worry about, okay, well, I don't have savings. They could still spend their paycheck. And so we have economists saying, well, because we have consumer spending, right, they're still spending, that's going to account for 70% of the GDP. And it's hard for the economy to enter into a recession as long as consumer spending is still growing. So how does this tie to the overall S&P 500? And what are some things that we should absolutely pay attention to? With that being said, you know, I want to go ahead and answer that question by heading into my laptop and just showing you guys the price action of what we're seeing for SPY and then talk about what are some things that we should absolutely pay attention to going forward. So we're on my laptop looking at ticker symbol SPY and clearly we still have about an hour and 17 minutes left for the trading session. However, before I go ahead and cover the bigger picture on the direction that we're heading, I want to go ahead and just backtrack and just kind of emphasize some things that I mentioned, which are the two main pieces of data that we recently got. For example, the CPI report. I want to go ahead and just break down what exactly happened. So at 8.30 Eastern time was when we got the report clearly hotter than expected expected inflation didn't bode too well as we actually started sliding down in the pre-market and then we opened up with a big red candle. However, as I mentioned to my private group, you know, there's going to be a lot of volatility. The market is very dynamic and so we actually started going upwards and then at this point, all over Fintwit, we had bulls saying, well, things are going to continue going up. You know, it's a bullish market. Listen, you have to tune out the noise and pay attention to the data, right? And so what we ended up having is just a little bit into like an hour later on into the trading session, we slid downwards and then we slid upwards again volatility. However, as I depicted earlier, if we look at where we close, we close at around this level at around $412. That's pretty much where we closed the day previously, right? So although there was a lot of volatility, you know, the markets just close at the same range moving sideways. So sometimes you just have to tune out the noise. Now going into, you know, the retail sales again, same description, right? Or same exact scenario. We had retail sales suggesting that consumers are spending. Well, why did the market go down? Down, well, this suggests, well, inflation is going to be a lot more stickier, right? Because if people are spending, right, that means inflation is going to go ahead and tick upwards. And that means the Federal Reserve is going to have a tougher job, you know, fighting inflation. And they're going to have to keep rates either higher for longer or hike even, you know, further, which, of course, doesn't do well for the overall market, right? That is a bad risk off environment. And so we're actually seeing, you know, the market was very choppy in the beginning trading sessions. We did rally up. We did go down. However, towards the end of the day, we're rallying upwards. Cool. Well, I want to go ahead and, you know, just show you guys what is something that we should pay attention to going forward and then also show you guys on a larger time frame what we're seeing right so one of the things i want to show you guys is the next fomc meeting is going to be around march 21st to march 22nd so why does this matter well this means that we have a significant amount of time 
before we have you know official news from the Fed on what their goal or what their plan is going to be right and so what does this mean when we have a lot of time well that means the market's still going to be undecisive because we don't know what the Fed is going to do right and so the market is going to most likely be choppy but if we just pay attention to the price action right because oftentimes I use a lot of different data points in confluence especially if you're familiar with the channel or you're part of the push a profit private group then you know that I don't just look at the technicals I don't just look at squiggly lines in a chart and try to depict where we're heading I look at several different data points and although you know, I, I kind of don't like to use technical analysis. Sometimes it's important to really pay attention to the price action. And so what we're going to see here is over here on the right hand side, we have volume by price, which is very different from volume by time. And so what we see here is when there's a lot of volume by price, that means, you know, shares are traded um, more frequently. Obviously, that means there's more volume, right? And so what we're seeing is around this area, we're seeing that there's more trading going on. And so what that means is we're going to see more consolidation, more sideways movement. Why? Because people are conflicted. Investors are conflicted. Are we going to have, you know, a soft landing or are we going to have a recession which is why you know we're having these sideways days and if we kind of zoom out from the larger picture yeah we go up yeah we go down up down but we're still kind of just moving sideways it's a choppy range however I do expect that we are most likely going to trend upwards in this choppy environment right and the reason I say this is because a lot of people say well the feds are far away from the 2% goal of inflation it's going to be much more difficult they're gonna have to rate or hike rates even higher up or they're gonna have to do it for longer well guess what we have a robust job market and that means that a recession cannot happen if you know there's just a maximum amount of employment why because although we may have a wage spiral we still are going to have people spending money it's not until you know rates get hiked up so badly that businesses have no choice but to cut and we're not seeing that we're gonna see you know the Fed is you know have mentioned that they're just gonna sustain you know hiking rates at a slower pace right and obviously the market has uh, the time of lag where even if they hike rates higher up it doesn't really impact or reflect into the market for a longer duration of time and so what we're probably gonna see is earnings for corporations are still going to be pretty decent and that's gonna you know obviously have the market trend upwards and we still have you know a few more data points that are gonna come out we're going to have another CPI report uh, before the Fed has their meeting. And we're also going to have another retail sales report. And so the Fed, they're not really too worried because they still have some more data points before they have to make their actual uh, decision. And what a lot of people tend to forget is even if the Feds, you know, continue hiking at a slower pace, it's not going to hurt the economy so bad, which could probably have a soft landing where, you know, we have to really look into FAIT, which is F-A-I-T, right? Not faith. We're looking at FAIT, F-A-I-T, which is the Federal Reserve's game plan where they said, okay, well, inflation doesn't have to be exactly 2%. It could be 2% on average through a longer duration of time. So they could just keep hiking rates at a very slow pace till 2030. And yeah, it may stifle the growth for the economy but it may prevent an actual recession which is why we may actually be seeing the market still tick upwards just not at a very exponential rate that we've seen in the past when obviously rates are slow i mean if we take a look at you know after the pandemic after this big sell-off we had quantitative easing where we had rates at such low levels of course the market had to go up right we're not going to see these big price movements especially around these areas right over here so it's going to be a choppy uh, trading session right going forward and obviously it's not going to move drastically upwards or drastically downwards now again there could be data that could just come out and change the whole entire landscape which is why you have to pay attention to what's going on in the macroeconomic environment what's going on with monetary policies and also fiscal policy with that being said this actually provides a great opportunity for traders why does this provide a great opportunity for traders well because there's going to be a lot of volatility I mean if we continue having days like February 14th where we have massive spikes up and massive spike downs yeah this does not help investors long term but investors are just dollar cost averaging they're sitting they're holding or they're having their you're rotating their money into other investment assets right well okay cool but for traders this also presents an opportunity to really capitalize off these large choppy movements however we still have to pay attention to several data points that are going to be coming out and with that being said this is just my thoughts on the overall market you should never invest or trade simply based 
based on someone else's opinion. You should always do your due diligence, but this is what I'm seeing in the overall market. It's going to be choppy, but we're most likely going to be trending upwards. With that being said, guys, if you guys want to know, you know, learn more of what it is that I look at when it comes to trading or investing in the overall market, make sure to check out the first link in the description of this video because it's going to be a link to the Push and Profit program where you have access to the Push and Profit private group where every single day I talk about what stocks I'm looking to trade and the reason why. And I also give you guys market updates. With that being said, make sure to check out those links and I'll see you guys on this next video right over here. Take care, guys.